knac.com thanks for joining us again from the darkest depths of sweden we have lord ariman guitarist and sometimes bassist for dark funeral they have a new album coming out in march called we are the apocalypse greetings lord ariman how are you oh thank you i'm doing pretty okay good what can you tell us about the new album what can fans expect from dark funeral I think uh, this time they're going to be in, in, in for a more deeper journey into to the dark realm. Uh, that's, that's how I feel about the new record. Uh, you know, we, we try to explore lots of new things on, the, on this. I mean, we, I, I kept my, my signature guitar playing, if you will, but, uh, but I wanted to to go more rhythmic with uh, with everything, both the drums and and and, uh, and the guitars, and also make uh, make the vocals more uh, I mean, you always want to tell a story when when you have a lyric and vocal to a song, but uh, but I wanted to make it more like this kind of bigger cinematic feel to to everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that that I didn't have that in plan originally, but that that, mm -hmm. that was the feeling I, I got when I, when we were working on this. That th this has such a more more depth, and it's it really brings you know. It really, I had so many visual pictures in front of me when I wrote this record and when we were mm -hmm. working on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, so it's like a, it's it's a, it's a bigger record than, than we have, what we have done before, I, I think. Where were you? Were you uh, in Sweden, or where were you um, sitting writing this album? Uh, well, I actually stopped writing already four years ago, oh, uh, cool. but then uh, obviously I, we could focus more on it when the, when the pandemic hit the world, when everything closed down. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, we had already that in plan with with or without the pandemic, mm. uh, because we had we had finished touring in in uh, early February, and that that was the plan. That was the I think February eighth or whatever we did the last gig, uh, and every everybody went on vacation after that because we had been touring a lot. Mm. We just needed neither a break, and uh, the plan was uh, as soon as I came back from the vacation, I was going to resume the writing. Mm. Uh, but then, then the, the whole world closed down, so I got stuck in, actually not a bad spot, but I got stuck in Cancun, mm. Mexico for, for <laughs> additional 10 wow. days. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So, <laughs> Lovely yeah, weather. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty good, but yeah, it was kind of dead city too, you know, everything closed yeah. down there too. So, oh, But uh, I, I didn't mind. I mean, I, I, I mean to, to be in Cancun, I've been in Sweden, just sitting in your own apartment, yeah, well, of course, working with, with the music, but I felt like this, still no rush. I can, I can hang out here in Cancun a little bit longer. Yeah. Did you, did you, did. Did you uh, get to enjoy a lot of tacos down there? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tacos. Uh, we, we got, you know, when everything closed down, we, you know, the ho every, all the hotels closed down too. So. So I rented this uh, Airbnb apartment on the street from uh, from the hotel, and fortunately there was this uh, beach restaurant that were open very close by, mm -hmm. uh, and there was basically no no other people. Everybody you know left, uh, so there was not many people left in 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 the whole Cancun. So mm -hmm. so the owner of uh, of that uh, little beach restaurant he he was so happy every every day we came there to eat and. And he, he, I mean, the, the menu wasn't that big. So I, yeah. I had, I guess, I was eating two different things <laughs> every day. <laughs> but he, he knew exactly what I wanted. That's so, it. But I said that I didn't mind. It was a good time. But yeah, when I finally came home, you know, I was so, so ready to, to dig deep into the writing process of this record. Uh, and obviously, it took a while until. I felt I, I were at the right place, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, but then I just you know the last album was like 2016, and before that it was almost like seven years ago. But you, I think you do wise, you do something unique that bands don't do because bands now are releasing albums year after year after year. But you guys, 
you do, I think you do well in having a big gap. Is that, is that on purpose? Uh, I mean, uh, for us, it's, we, we're so busy in between. So there's, you know, there's no time to write. And, I, and you know, I got to be at a certain place when I, when I write music, you know, in, in, in my spiritual world, if you will. Sure. And, you know, and we're touring a lot uh, for, for every record. And, and I try to bring, uh, you know, recording equipment set up on the tour bus. And, and mm-hmm. you know, I can't, I can't work like that. Uh, I mean, for me, it's like I, I don't write songs just to write a song. Uh, you know, sure. it, it, it has a deeper meaning for me. Of course. So um, I want to focus on, you know, one thing at a time. When we're touring, we're touring. Then when we come to a point like we feel like, okay, now we toured pretty much all over the world mm-hmm. and uh, yeah maybe time to start looking into new music mm-hmm. then we just tell everybody label booking agents and everybody okay now we're going to focus on writing music don't book too much uh, for us because we want to really focus on this and that's that's the way we kind of work and uh, of course in a, in a way I would like to release music more often but uh, I guess I'm not that kind of type of musician that, mm-hmm. you know, want to go that way. Yeah. Well, like you stated, you you tour a lot, and uh, in a way, you do do give the fans what they want because you you're you're doing world tours and you're out there. And I was uh, fortunate to catch you out here in Los Angeles. I think it was with Belfagor, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, oh yeah, with the tour with them. Yeah, and uh, that was an amazing show, and I'm glad I got to catch you guys before. Uh, oh, thank you. Know, you before everything happened but uh and now uh this is your second album with century media is that correct yeah yeah and how's that relationship going so far i, I trust it's going well yeah i mean we have a good uh, communication with them and i mean it's also sona sona music who, who owns the central media now and uh, uh so sona music sweden is handling us here in, in here in sweden basically so mm-hmm. Uh, and I have a good contact with them, really good people, and we've got some amazing support down there. Very good, very good. Uh, yeah. And they, they, they really believe in this record too, and, and believe in us as a band. So mm-hmm. that makes everything, you know, the cooperation much easier if, if you, you feel like you get the support you want yeah. from, from, from your label. I mean, this time they, I mean, you always want to. You know, have ideas when you want to do how much you know want to, you know, we're recording videos or whatever. Uh, and I was, you know, okay, now I got to push for for the band so we get, some, you know, a lot out from that side too. But uh, when I was having uh, this Zoom meeting with with uh, with the staff at Central Media, they were like, dude, you don't have to to say anything. This is what we want to do. Want to do. And <laughs> it was. So much more than uh, <laughs> than we even had him plan from our side that we wanted to do. So, so they they were looking in, in an even bigger picture than us, and and that that's probably the first time I experienced that. Mm-hmm. So so that feels good. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you got you've been doing it since 1993, so I think you have an idea of what you're doing. You guys, Dark Funeral, for three decades have been going strong, and and what do you what has kept you going for three decades what has been the fuel to ignite dark funeral all, all this time well i guess uh you know for, for me it's like i'm kind of you know I, i'm satisfied with with what we are doing but i know that we can do everything much better as long as i feel like we can have always top ourselves then we just keep then it's easy to keep going you know i just want to keep on improving keep challenging ourselves and uh, and uh, I like to work hard for, for something I really have passion for and something I really believe in and uh, you know and I just want to you know reach for new heights in every possible way you know if, if you believe in what you do and have have a strong dedication and passion then it just you know just want to move forward still have that uh, inside of me as I have for, for over 30 years now. That's very uh, 
and exactly why I do have that, I can't tell, but mm -hmm. I guess that's part of my personality. Mm -hmm. now, now, Sweden is, is you know, known for its Swedish death metal. You guys bringing the darkest, you know, black metal from Sweden. Was there was there a much of a of a scene when you were growing up and starting this, to, starting to have ideas for dark funeral? You know, where, where where did the black metal come from? Uh, well, actually, I, I grew up in the north part of Sweden, and uh, I was basically the one. Uh, we were just a few person who, who like extreme metal, so I, I started my first band uh, up there called Satan's Disciples. Uh, so this was before dark funeral. And uh, then I decided to move down to Stockholm in 91. And uh, naturally, I wanted to start a new band here. So, so I started looking for people already in 91. I had some additions with, with lots of people. And, uh, but it was the time that I met Blackmon and uh, we felt like, okay, now we're on the same page. Let's uh, re really try to, to put this together. And uh, yeah, so in 93, at that time between 91 and 93, like uh, 91, 92, uh, the band were called the Ariman. And uh, in 92, we had a, before we became Dark Funeral, was another lineup on the, the Minus here. We had a different drummer, uh, a guy named Nico. So uh, that lineup were, under that lineup, we were called Ariman. Uh, but always, I told everybody, I don't want to go by my name. We need to find a name that, mm -hmm. that's a band name and not, you know, one of the persons in the band. Uh, so, yeah, we came up with Dark Funeral one day when we were sitting at my place. Uh, and we felt uh, that really fit that what, what we had in mind for the band. And the rest is history, history I guess. Mm -hmm. Now you ha you have had some lineup changes, and uh, this album will be the first with a new drummer and new bassist, correct? Yeah. And uh, who who's who who did you bring on for the ride this time around? Well, uh, um, uh, both of them were on tour uh, in the U.S. with us. They they I mean they've been in the band for quite some years already. Uh, so, but uh, on bassist uh, we have. Uh, Adam Alec and his uh, his guy I I known since I guess ninety one uh, when I moved down here to to Stockholm. Uh, he, he at that time he had a band called uh, Excruciate, and uh, uh, there was a, there was some talk about me joining them in ninety one, but I felt mm. well they they was at that time they were super technical and I couldn't play it so technical you know thrash speed. And kind of stuff that they were doing. So, and uh, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to do, you know, go more into the dark side of, of metal. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, but, but he's, I've known him since, yeah, since 91, I guess. And then we have yeah. Yellow Mound drums, and uh, I've known him for quite some years also. I mean, he's, he's been playing with lots of bands here in Sweden. So we met on festivals and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. uh, over the years. And, well, we've never been hanging out with each other because he's so much younger. But we, we talked when we met, when we you know played festival and stuff, mm -hmm. or or just met at different concerts. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, one thing didn't work out with the old drummer. We uh, for me it was quite obvious to to give him a call and see what what he had to to offer and if if he was interested and. Uh, yeah, well, you you probably listened to the record already. You know that the guy can play drums. Oh, uh, yeah, the record's phenomenal. <laughs> the guy is uh, amazing, and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just re I'm really glad he wanted to join, and uh, and uh, that we could get the lineup together that really, you know, focus on on being professional music musicians mm -hmm. also, and uh, not. No, there's been so much uh, other kind of bullshit that been, you know, there's a reason why you part way with different musicians, uh, and a different reason every time, of course. And sure, 
but so, some of them have been like it's just it's just not the way you can have the situation in a band you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without going into too personal like situation sure. but I, I understand uh but yeah so, so i you know I, I had to come to a point when i had to you know tell everybody you know, Okay, if this is gonna work, you know, if we're gonna be able to fucking bring the band forward and keep on touring, we need to get fucking our life together and you know mm -hmm. uh it's gotta be some kind of controlled chaos. Uh and, and as I said, it is it's up to everybody. If you wanna leave, fine. If you wanna, you know, keep on doing this, you know. But this is the way we got to do it. And everybody, well, you're definitely right because this is not going to work like like uh, like in the old days, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, but that that's I mean, it's tough to be in a band, and, and right, you still need to have the same focus. Everybody needs to have the same focus. And if some someone is wandering away on on a shady road, then it just doesn't work. Uh, after three decades, I mean, I, I understand it's, it's, a, it's a rough road. Has there ever been a time where you were like almost tempted to just turn away and walk away from it all? Of course, many times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's just it's just that one second when I feel like, fuck it, I've had it. <laughs> uh, but that's that's uh, that's the reason. I mean, you learn all the time. You, you learn what what is working and what is not working mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I try to learn all the time you know and try to figure out ways that works and not work and and, and i think i we removed so much stuff that everybody knows it is not working that way you know to keep doing a band uh, which makes it easier where we are today because yeah, we removed a lot of those things that just, you know, is poisoning within a band. Right. Yeah, poison's a good word. Yeah. You want that uh, yeah. re removed from you. So not just from the band, but from sometimes your personal life too, right? And that, that's what I mean. It's, 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 uh, yeah, but so, some people, you know, yeah, everybody goes <laughs> through different kind of tough life, tough things in life and stuff Very like true. that. Very true. Uh, so do I. I mean, life ain't uh, fucking easy, but yeah. I still try to keep focus on 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 the band, which is important sure. to me. Right. Uh, and and as I said, I mean, the things everybody knows, everybody who has been in bands and also seen how bands work, everybody knows that there's certain stuff that just doesn't work, and there's a couple of reasons why bands break up. There's, why people leave and so on. And uh, there's also re one reason why some stay and keep doing this because it's all about having the right priorities right. in life and with the music. Mm -hmm. You know, when life sucks, you know, you just got to get it together if you can't. Then, yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's uh, kind of ironic that like some of the darkest metal, black metal from Sweden, you know music in general for people it brings them out of the darkness the darkness a little bit you know it, it helps raise people's spirits a little bit and uh i mean that that i think is what dark you know has been doing for the few decades is just empowering people especially the last couple of years where they turn to music um, do you have a big connection with the fans where like they reach out to you and like they thank you like Oh, you got me out of uh, some tough times, or you have any connection with fans like that? Oh, many, uh, and I've also been confronted on the streets from from people who have said that uh, without us they wouldn't be alive and stuff like that. And it's I mean, it's just, it's easy to to get that kind of stories told by by an email or a letter. But when, when we have the person in front of you and, and you just picture everything his, he or her is telling you uh, and how much uh, the band and the music have meant, and sometimes even me. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, at first, I, I mean, I, I don't understand why, why I'm such a 
you know how I can really affect people like that. Is, mm-hmm. I don't know why, but uh, but it's, it's, it's of course it's, it's touching to to hear these stories. But at the same time, it's weird because I can't really see myself that important. And if you know what I mean, yeah. So I, I I have a little bit difficult to connect the dots, and I hear what they are saying. But is it really me they are talking about and the band? That that's the connection I can't really you know, it's, put it's, together. It's it feels man. like that they are talking to to the guy behind me. <laughs> you, know? no, you, you and then Dark Queen are definitely an inspiration. Uh, we're talking with Lord Ariman Tars for Dark Funeral. March 18th, We Are the Apocalypse is the new album set for release through Century Media. Make sure you get those pre-orders in. Now, you have um, a pretty big uh, party coming up right after the release, March 19th, correct? Yeah. This That's, is uh, the album release Planet party. To, to do. Yeah, that, that's the plan. So we'll see what happens with all these restrictions. You know, everything is still. I mean, personally, I think uh, this last wave is going to blow over by March. So I, I think it's all going to be good. But some people in the organization are a little bit worried. So sure. uh, let's see what happens. But uh, I will fight for everything to go as planned. And this uh, is going to be live streamed as well? That's the plan. So I'm waiting for, I don't know what's going on, but I've been waiting mm-hmm. for a final fucking call on that uh, wherever it feels like. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we really need to have everything set right. really soon. So, so we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. But yeah, yeah. I mean, since, since we can't really tour like we wanted to do, you know, mm-hmm. we do, uh, you know, Sweden is fairly open. Uh, we we do have this uh, COVID passes, so we can go to mm-hmm. uh, shows and stuff like that. And uh, if you keep it that way, it's good. But of course, it's different to to travel to other countries and, and play there and so. Yeah. We felt like I mean, we, we still want to have the whole world with us, you know. So sure. we do it live stream and we just do a big fucking party all mm-hmm. together, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and try to to basically do the best of the situation you know right uh so that's 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 the plan so yeah. i uh, i hope we can have everything ready soon and that everybody join in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah march is a ways away so yeah I'm, I'm we're all hopeful too that it still comes so uh again lord ariman i want to thank you for your time again we are the apocalypse march 18th get those pre-orders in get some merch and definitely make plans to see them when they come to your city, you know, hopefully by the end of the year, maybe, what do you think? Or... Uh, yeah, for US, <laughs> that's the plan. So well, there, there is a plan. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm just waiting for, you know, uh, you know, just the world to open just up the... so we can really okay. get things rolling. Very good. Um, do you have any uh, words to the fans about We Are the Apocalypse, the new album, or just a, a message from Dark Funeral to all the fans? Well, just make sure to check it out. You're sure going to be in for a fucking dark ride. And uh, some people are here call it the most extreme and aggressive record to date. I don't know about that, but uh, I feel like it's 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 really deep and, and really it's really it's. A, record that really grabs you by the neck and just throw you into a fucking dark chamber <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. so fucking enjoy the ride yeah i got a, i had a chance to listen to it and i'm already telling you right now it's on my list of best of 2022 definitely all right thank you very much very Glad good very, that. very good well lord Ariman, thank you for your time give a horns and a hails to everybody in Dark Funeral for me. And uh, this is Francisco with knec.com. Again, check out Dark Funeral. We are the apocalypse March 18th. Thanks. All right. Cheers, man. Cheers. Bye. Bye.